uh, we're also talking off the air, and we just played it by a second ago. Yeah. Uh, if you get tired or not of performing like certain songs, like man, I've done this for so many years, I'm sick of this. I mean, yeah. have you hit that point or not? I, I haven't. I've seen footage of Michael Jackson with the Jackson Five when the, the Jackson Five want to perform the old stuff, and Michael's like, "Oh, that's old. I don't perform the old stuff." But yeah. for the crowd, I'll do it for y'all. For the crowd, yeah, yeah. And I've never been at that point. There's times when I when I zone out. There's times when I perform and get by, and I'm thinking. Is room service still open in the hotel? <laughs> You're completely zoned <laughs> out. Yeah, but I have to give thanks. I have to give thanks to the fans, to the creator, because without that record, there's a lot of people. Who, there's a lot of people who don't know my whole catalog. Right. Who come to just see me do that song, and if they come to see me do "Get By," they get to learn about the rest of my catalog. So I gotta all praise due to Most High for even blessing me with a record like that, and yeah, Kanye man. West and Kendra Ross and everybody else who worked on it. Talking about Kanye, man, what were your thoughts when he? Uh, obviously, everyone's going crazy when he had the meeting with Donald Trump. I mean, have you talked to him since that meeting, or? Um, I have not. I um, I reached out to him on Twitter uh, uh, before the meeting when he when he was uplifting Trump because okay. he reached out to Jay Z publicly, so I felt like I could reach out to him publicly. Right, right. You know what I'm saying, but I mean, you know, Kanye West. I think that he, when it comes to Trump, that he's confused. I think he don't have the facts. He can't because if he had the facts, he wouldn't be up there. And I think that sometimes people get lose their real friends and be in celebrity bubbles. Any black man, any person of color, any gay person, any Jewish person, any Muslim person who stands next to and normalizes Donald Trump is not doing the rest of the country and any intelligent, compassionate person any favors. How did you uh, feel when you heard the uh, Tribe record? I'm on the Tribe record. No, but I'm saying when you first so, hear it, that's so what I'm yeah, saying. But like, I'm saying like I heard it before it came out. You know what I'm saying? So I, I I was at Q-Tip's house listening to them work on that Tribe record, and I I watched them shed tears while they were making that record. See, that's you know what man? I'm curious about. Like, like that process. Like like obviously you're do do they reach out and it's like yo like let's just vibe and check something out or how does that even happen? Like you just walk into a session. Right. Well, I was actually at Q-Tip's house trying to get my own record done. Me and him have been working on a song for a couple of years. You know, rest in peace to Fife Dog. Yeah, definitely. You know, man. Fife passed away and joined the ancestors. So I kind of when that happened, I fell back off of reaching out to Q-Tip about my my music. Because I couldn't even imagine the, the space he was in. Yeah. I saw him at an Afropunk event in Brooklyn. He said, hey, what's up with that song? I was like, hey, I'm still down to work on it. I went over the house. And when I went over the house, Chirobi was over there. And they were working on the tribe stuff. So I fell all the way back. And I just spent like a few days there just hanging out, watching them work on the Tribe Called Quest record until they asked me to drop a verse on one of the beats. Were you like low-key while you're listening to it? Like, man, I need to be honest. Nah, I, need to be honest. I wasn't. You were just like a fan. I was just a fan because in my mind, Tribe Called Quest is other. In my mind, Tropical Quest is beyond the realm of human understanding. Mm. So I couldn't even imagine the idea of me being on a Tropical Quest. I wasn't trying to be on the record. I just was I was just trying to see them make it. And for them to ask me, that messed my whole day up. Like that messed my whole day up. When they said <laughs> get on this record, I said, okay. I went home and I didn't do anything for the rest of the day besides think about what I was gonna say on that record. How long does it take you to write a verse for that? I could write verses in two, three minutes, or I could write verses in two, three years. See, that's what I'm wondering. Yeah. Like, obviously, that you verse, look up to him like that so much. Yeah. Is it almost like, is the pressure almost overwhelming? It was. It was definitely overwhelming. I started forming my verse in my head the moment they asked me. Wow. Because I'm like, by the time, because I didn't lay it that day, I was going to come back the next day and lay it. But I was like, I need to go in and I need to knock this out the park. I need to lay it in a way where, because at that point, I wasn't sure what was going to make the album. They were just trying things. So I just, as soon as I was asked, I started thinking of lines and thinking what I was going to say so I could be prepared. What are your uh, thoughts, man? I mean, we're, we're, what, two days away from President Trump. I mean, yeah. this is real. This is reality. It is reality. What uh, what advice do you have for people out there that just maybe feel, you know, I mean, obviously pissed off and angered and and just not happy with the results. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It has happened. So how right. do we? Where do we go from here? Well, Arizona in this area of the world, the Southwest has a particular history of discrimination when it comes to people of color, Very when it comes true. to immigrants, yes. and stuff like that. So I will say that I'm happy that Arizona seemed to have stepped up. In terms of the p amount of people who didn't vote for Trump, you know, people assumed that he was going to do better in Arizona than he did. So I want to thank Arizona, the yeah. people here <laughs> for stepping up and, and really, you know what I'm saying? But I think that now that it is the reality, there are groups of people who are going to be marginalized in this country. Jews, blacks, Latinos, gay people, the disabled. He makes fun of the he makes fun of the disabled. Yeah. You know, veterans. He makes fun of veterans. So. All these groups of people, everybody except for straight white males who are going to be further marginalized in Trump's America, we people who are compassionate and intelligent need to show these communities love and stand by them. I'm curious real quick, just, I mean, obviously we're super excited to have Green Lantern now part of yeah, Chino Coach Chino Lantern Radio. And thank you for uh, Power 98.3. What, yeah. what, what is the, uh, like, I mean, how long do you guys go back, bro? I met Green Lantern in Vermont. 
Wow. Did Free's you know like, that? I don't I remember, remember that. I met <laughs> Green Lantern. I'm going to tell you, I met Green Lantern at Eminem the same day. Oh, damn. It was 1998. Wow. In February, I noticed because Eminem was on the cover <laughs> of Rolling Stone the next month. And Eminem, it was Black Star at Brooklyn, Vermont, and Green Lantern at Eminem. I never heard of Green Lantern. And he was DJing the show. And Eminem had dropped the record. The Slim Shady record, that the, the first single, Hi My Name Is, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it blew up so big that he went from opening for Black Star to now he had the headline. And I remember we was like, who is this white boy <laughs> that's got a now headline? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was Brooklyn, Lamont, it was Brooklyn, Vermont, and Green Lantern was a DJ. For years, I thought Green Lantern was from Vermont because of that <laughs> event. I'm like, yeah, Green Lantern from Vermont. He's the hottest DJ in He's Vermont, the hottest yo, DJ son. in Vermont. <laughs> Dude, again, man, uh, Kay Valentine, thank you for the time. Thank it you is for a pleasure me. to meet you. Thank you. And uh, we're excited for the show, man. Any, anything we should touch on before we get up out of here? Shout out to Kay Valentine. Her new single is That's Real featuring BJ the Chicago Kid. The video is, is cracking off on YouTube. Um, we're very excited about Javoti Media, and we're f excited about this seven-hour Me and Styles P 